Okay, so let's go ahead and create our project. So this will be npm init Adonis TS app at latest. And I'm going to call this Adonis JS auth. It's going to be web. And we can skip through the remainder of those. While that's installing the dependencies, I'm going to go ahead and open it up in my editor. There we go. Next, let's go ahead and cd into it and install lucid and auth. So npm i at Adonis JS lucid and Adonis JS auth. After these install, we're going to want to configure both. So node ace configure at Adonis JS lucid. We want to do lucid first because auth relies on lucid. I'm going to be using Postgres and I will take the instructions within the terminal. Let's just copy these environment variable rules and plop them into our env.ts file within our project. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and configure auth. So node ace configure Adonis.js auth. I'm going to be using Lucid. This is for web. Model name will be user, and I'll have it go ahead and create a migration for me. Now, before we run that migration, I do want to alter it slightly. So let's pop it open. Table.string username. We're going to add a username column into our table. This will be not nullable, and we'll also force it to be unique. And we force our email to be unique as well. So I'm going to go ahead and add that into the user model too. So let's do hat column public username string. Okay, next let's go ahead and configure our environment variables. So the Postgres user is just Postgres for me. The password is the very secure password. And the database is, uh, I think it's Adonis.js blog. Now we're good to go ahead and try to run our migration. So node ace migration run, there it went. Okay, next let's go ahead and actually create our auth controller. So node ace make controller auth. We can go ahead and jump into that. And let's uncomment the HTTP context contract import. And let's stub out a couple of actions here to render out our pages. So public async. I will do register show. All right, we're going to want view out of our HTTP context contract. And let's return view.render uh, auth and register. We'll copy this one time, change it from register show to login show. And now let's go ahead and create those pages. Well, let's first actually create the routes for them. So we'll do route get register this will be for the auth controller dot register show method as auth dot register dot show <clears throat> then we'll have another one for login auth controller dot login show as auth dot login show okay now let's create those pages so under resources within views, let's do a new file within a folder called auth and let's do register first. So we'll do register dot edge. All right, to start with here, let's do a form with an action. We'll fill an action here later and the method will be post. All right, within this form, we're gonna have a label for username, which contains an input of type text with a name of username. We'll copy and paste this a couple of times. And then down at the bottom, we'll put our submit button. There we go. All right, so our second field will instead of username be email, and our last field will be password. So this will be of type email, and the name will be email as well. <clears throat> and our password will be of type password and the name will be password as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this and create a new file called login.edge and paste that in there. Let's go ahead and get rid of the email. Uh, since we want our users to be able to log in with either their username or email, uh, we'll instead just use the email field since it's of type text, and we will change the name from username to just UID. And we'll change the button text from register to login as well. 
Next, let's go ahead and configure it to where our user will be able to log in with their username or email. So within the auth config, if we scroll down a little bit, we'll see a UIDs array. All that we need to do is add username into this. And now our user can now log in with either their username or their email because Adonis will check against both of these UIDs instead of just email now. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and now create the actual register and login methods. So public async register. HTTP context, there we go. We are going to want request, response, and auth out of the HTTP context here. So first, we're also going to want to validate the data that we're getting. So let's import schema and rules from IOC Adonis core validator. And let's create a user validator. So user schema equals schema.create. We're going to have one for the username field. This is going to be schema.string. Let's go ahead and trim the input. And the rules for this is going to verify that it's actually unique. Uh, so this will be for the table users, the column username. And we also want to verify that it is case insensitive. Now I'm going to copy and paste this entire line because email is going to be very similar. All that we want to do is add an additional rule to verify that it's actually an email. So once we have that added in, there we go. Uh, email is now good. And then lastly, we just have password. It's also going to be of type string. We don't want to do any alteration on the password, uh, but we do want to verify that it is at least eight characters long. So now that we have this schema created for the validator, all that we need to do is actually validate the data. So we can do that off of the request.validate method, pass it in the schema. And there we go. Now that we have validated data as data, we can now create our user. So const user equals await user.create, provide it all of the data. And now that we have the actual user, we can now log that user in. So we'll await auth. And since we have the user, we can just call login and provide it the user model record. And then let's just return response, redirect, and send them back to the home page. Okay, so that is our register. Let's go ahead and create our login. <clears throat> login, we're going to want the same thing. So request, response, and auth. Actually, let's also do session here as well. Okay, so we don't wanna validate anything whenever it comes to the login. Um, we just want to actually get the items off of the request. So we'll do const, and this will be UID and password equals request only UID and password. So out of the request data, we're gonna grab UID and password and extract that out of the object into its own variables. Once we have that, we can await auth dot attempt attempt to log in with the UID and the password. If that fails, it will kick it back. Um, and if we want to add in our own message response to this, we can actually catch the error. And then we can provide session flash form, I believe. And we'll provide it your username or email is incorrect or your username, email, or password. Yeah, email or password is incorrect, something of that sort. And we will return response.redirect back to the home page if they did successfully log in. Otherwise, we will return response.redirect dot back to go back to the form. Okay. Doesn't look like user actually imported. There we go. Should be good now. All right, let's go ahead and add these into our routes as well. So route dot post register auth controller dot register as auth dot register and route.post login 
auth controller dot login as auth dot login. And then last but not least, let's also add in those actions into the uh, into the forms. So we'll do route auth dot login to uh, that will generate out the route for auth dot login and provide it into the actual action. And we're going to want to do the same thing for register. So route auth uh, register. There we go. Okay, so let's give that a save and let's test it out. So let's go ahead and start up our server. So npm run dev. Actually, I already have a server running. Let me close that server and rerun this so that I actually get the port that I'm looking for here. Okay, let's open it up within our browser. So localhost 3333. Let's try to visit our register form. There it is. So we'll do test user one, test user one at gmail.com, password zero one. Oh, right, we need to install PHC Argon, which is the hashing mechanism that it uses for logging in. So we'll do npm i at p or is it i? No, it's just PHC Argon. PHC Argon 2. All right, let's go ahead and run our server again. Head back to our form. Password 01. There we go. So it looks like we registered all right. We can verify that within our database here. So if we take a look at it, user model, there is our user. So we are indeed A-OK. -okay. Uh, one last thing that we're gonna wanna do so that our actual authentication session uh, carries through is within our middleware under start kernel for our global middleware. Let's import app middleware silent auth. That's going to carry our user session through uh, sub, uh, to the request so that it's actually populated within auth. So that whenever we do any checks, whenever we try to get auth.user within our controllers, that user will actually be populated. Okay, so next let's go ahead and do our log out so that we can actually log out our user. So let's do public async log out. I will get request or response, sorry, response and auth out of our HTTP context contract. So all that we need to do is await auth.logout. Oops. Okay, and then we will return response.redirect and let's send them to the login page. So to route auth.login.show. All right, let's create a route for that. So route, route dot get, whoops, log out, off controller dot log out as off dot log out. And then since our users only authenticated uh, and we only have this login page or this welcome page here, let's go ahead and just add in an anchor for logging out here. So we'll do at if auth.user a href equals route auth logout. Okay, so this anchor will only display if our user is authenticated. And so there it is right up here. So we can go ahead and click it. And we are logged out and redirected into the login page. So next, let's go ahead and try to log in. So we can try with a uh, username. And there we go. We are logged back in. We can try logging out again. We can verify that we are actually logged out by heading back into the home page, and we can no longer see that logout button. So let's go ahead and try logging in with the full email now. So test user one gmail.com. And voila, there we go. So now we have completed the ability to register, to log in, and to log out all in under 15 minutes. Okay, so I did forget to do one thing here. So we have this session flash 
uh, for the form key stating that you got your username, email, or password incorrect if the authentication actually fails. And currently we aren't doing anything with that within the login page. So if you attempted to log in and you get it wrong, all it would do is kick you back to the form with no contextual information. So let's go ahead and add that contextual information in using that flash message. So at if flash messages dot has, and we use the key of form here. So if it has the key of form and if, then we want to display a div with a role of alert. Uh, you can style that if you wish. I'm just gonna leave it as is. And display flash messages dot get our form key. So now if we attempt to log in with invalid information, we're gonna get at least some contextual information stating why we got redirected back here. Thank you.